of the Titans. No, not that one. Two of the biggest and most epic MMOs on the market today go head to head. Who's coming out on top? Amazon's gritty and grindy new world or the shiny new toy in Throne and Liberty? Well, I don't want to give too much away, but one of them has a fucking sky whale. What's up guys, I'm Smith from Gamers Heroes and today I'm going to break down the best and worst of New World and Throne and Liberty putting these two titans to the test. We're going to tackle the visual styles, the combat, questing, PvP, PvE, solo and group play. By the end of this video you're going to know which one of these games is a complete waste of your time and which one isn't. They say a picture speaks a thousand words. I'm, I'm not sure how much a video speaks but it's a sequence of pictures so a lot of words I guess. Anyway, watch these two brief clips very carefully and tell me what you think of the combat systems. Now, just watching those on the surface level, I would be amazed if many people consider New World to be the better of the two. Ignoring the overly aggressive UI elements imposed by Throne and Liberty's obsessive damage numbers and shiny abilities, it just looks more action-packed. However, if you dive a little bit deeper, there's definitely a lot more under the hood. Throne and Liberty's combat is still the same old tab-style combat we've seen and all come to love with MMO games, but with a satisfying and engaging blocking system that looks and feels fantastic, while also rewarding the player with mechanical benefits. Now watch these two clips again in a more controlled environment at the visual and mechanical stimulation of the defensive systems of both games. Again, you look at those two and Throne of Liberties just looks better. It's funny, both of these games are MMORPGs, but they could not be any further apart in the combat department. Throne of Liberty is, is junk food, it's the McDonald's of the MMO world, whereas New World is more fine dining. Now that's not to say Throne of Liberty's combat is bad, it's fantastic. Sometimes I want to sit in my jogging bottoms with Cheetos covered fingers, scoffing down a double cheeseburger. Other times I want to whack on a nice shirt, sit in a nice restaurant surrounded by posh people as they carefully judge me because my kids scream stranger danger when I refuse to give them pudding. Throne and Liberty's easily accessible and pick up and play combat style is instantly recognisable to any MMO fan. It's low effort, low payout. New World's combat is more challenging, it's more visceral. I don't even know what that means, people just use it to describe cool shit all the time. It takes a lot more work to get to where you need to be, but it's so much more satisfying as a result. New World's combat is more in depth, more challenging and ultimately more immersive. Let's take another little look at these clips and I'll go through with them bit by bit. So straight off the bat you can see there are a lot of enemies here and these are on level enemies. They're all the same level as me and the initial attacks I'm using are a single attack. This is just one whirlwind attack that goes through and then all of my melee attacks are automated. They're just hitting off by themselves every chance they get. I then use a sequence of a couple of abilities to kill the enemies with AoEs and then just repeat the process over and over again. For the vast majority of this in the middle of that mess, I'm just blocking, using healing abilities, waiting for my cooldowns to reset. There's no real impact here, it doesn't really matter what I do unless I just completely fail to play my cast, I'm not going to die. On the other hand, in New World, these are a much lower level than me and there's not too many. I can handle about two or three on level guys, but nothing like you can see me do in Throne and Liberty. On the surface, this looks quite the same, but it is definitely not. There is a lot more going on here. Firstly, there is no auto attack. Every swing of your weapon is manual. You do it yourself. Secondly, when you switch weapons, if you spam the button, you will switch and then switch back. So you can't switch, use an ability and switch back. You will just spam through your cycle all the time. So you have to time with your animations to switch weapon, use the other ability and then revert back to your original weapon. The outcome is relatively similar. I wipe out the group of enemies, but there is so much more interaction in New World's combat system, despite it looking far less flashy. Ideally, if we had the best of both worlds, I would bring Throne and Liberty's blocking system over to New World just because it's so rewarding for the player. But ultimately, New World's combat comes out on top. It's deeper, more engaging, and feels far more realistic. First blood goes to New World. Now, some of you entitled, snotty, unappreciative little shitters that grew up playing AAA games will likely struggle to appreciate the quality of graphics in both of these titles. 
But for those of us that grew up trading Pokemon cards, wearing Naf Naf jackets and watching Conan on TV, this is incredible. RuneScape, Bloody Neopets, Habbo Hotel, Anarchy Online, City of Heroes, Lord of the Rings Online, Star Wars Galaxies, the golden era of the MMO featured some incredible games, but let's be honest, most of them look like absolute shit. I refuse to mention World of Warcraft, that game is crap. Both Throne and Liberty and New World represent the very peak of visuals in the MMO space, a vastly more technically demanding field than traditional game development. To think we're playing MMO games that look this good, and one of them is f free, is absolutely incredible. Throne in Liberty, with its diverse travel options, focuses primarily on sprawling vistas, gorgeous views beckoning from the horizon, whereas Amazon's New World focuses more on the finer details with beautiful lighting, atmospheric locales, and fantastically detailed creature designs. Visually speaking, both of these games are absolute winners, but as the devil says, it's all about the details. New World comes out on top for me with visuals that rival anything the MMO space has to offer. Okay, let's talk about quest design. Now, typically I wouldn't bring this up, but there is such a stark difference between these two games, I have to talk about it. Go here, pick this up, go here and kill this, go here and speak to this person, go here and pick this up, then bring it back and then go speak to that person again. I've just summarized 99.9% .9 of quests in every MMO that's ever been conceived. They are dull, boring, contrived, and serve no other purpose than moving that tiny little XP bar a little closer to the next completely irrelevant level in the never ending quest to reach endgame. Only for idiots to then bitch on the forums that you've got through the game too quick and that is no content. While both Throne and Liberty and New World fall victim to this archaic and unimaginative tradition, both games do make an effort to impress with narrative delivery. Gorgeous cutscenes, voice acting, a story that isn't dull as shit, both stories help break up the monotonous grind and they're both really good. However, of all the categories we're breaking down today, this one's clear winner is Throne and Liberty and it's not even close. Throne and Liberty's quests intertwine effortlessly. You reach a hub, you grab all the quests, you get them done, and you move on, sometimes stopping to enjoy some cool cutscenes and story moments along the way. But for the most part, Throne and Liberty understand you just want to progress. That said, it's not afraid to break up the monotony with creative quest design that New World just fails to compete with. Solving rewarding puzzles and riddles, tackling challenging platforming sections, Throne and Liberty's questing about the best you can expect in a modern MMO. While Amazon would rather have you running around a cave for 20 minutes competing with five other players for a limited spawn tree, or an item that's not even a 100% drop rate. And this happens a lot. It's 2024. I shouldn't be competing for minor quest spawns in an MMO game. Now, they say money can't buy happiness. Only poor people say that. I'd be very happy if I had tons of money. But do you know what else it can't buy? Intelligence, apparently. These archaic, frustrating quests are scattered throughout New World. And if waiting five minutes for a single boss to spawn wasn't annoying enough, there's more. Almost every bloody pathway is filled with random NPCs asking a complete stranger for help. Because, you know, if you were stranded in the middle of a dark wood, you would definitely approach a dude covered in blood, carrying a massive fucking axe for help and ask for assistance. And these quests almost always send you back the way you fucking came. I lack the expletives to really describe how annoyingly muddy New World's quest system is. Thank f*** for getting to max level is fast, because damn, it's frustrating as hell. Yes, Throne and Liberty takes this one easy. Let's move on to the PvE content. And again, honestly, this isn't even a fair comparison. Throne in Liberty's PvE is a means to an end, content to justify the grind to reach the meaty endgame. Although the dungeon and solo only boss battles are fantastic, that's about all you get. Almost all avenues of late game progress require groups of people. Despite MMOs being centered around social activity, I often find other people infuriating and would typically rather shave with a cheese grater than group up with console players that can't understand the basic first wave attack of a typical MMO boss and wipe for two hours straight. Anyway, New World, while centered around the arduous journey of PvE fueling the PvP engagements of Endgame, the crafting system is incredible. You can cut trees, mine rocks, fish, harvest, skin, smelt, make leather, ride a horse, craft furniture, make jewelry, engineer devices, cook, make magic, build weapons, and craft armor. Or you can sit in a town playing music, providing buffs for random players in exchange for coins. Honestly, as stupid as it sounds, the music system is really cool. New World's dominant PvE performance is a combination of gorgeous environments, excellent enemy designs, and a crafting system rivaled only by that of the legendary RuneScape. Look, shut up. Yes, you, the person about to bitch in the comments about RuneScape. If you didn't spend endless hours of your youth fishing for lobsters in Catherby, you've got no idea what it means to be alive. Throne in Liberty's PvE is by no means bad, it's just very limited in choice and very limited in content. But that does mean it doesn't hold a candle to New World. Plus one for New World on this one. 
I suppose we better talk about PvP. Huh. I think most modern day MMOs struggle because they are not creative enough with end game content. PvE is often seen as limited, provided only as a means to grind for gear to prepare for better content that's typically months down the road. As such, they fall on PvP. The ultimate test of skill. One man against another fighting to the death for glory, for pride, or just to teabag an opponent and talk shit and chat. In reality, it's typically nothing more than alpha tribes dominating servers and the average player just getting ganked and wiped into oblivion every time they step foot in a PvP area. Both New World and Throne of Liberty boast impressive PvP endgame content, a myriad of systems and mechanics interwoven with game economics and political structures to make actions of players and guilds count. The only trouble is, nobody fucking tells you what any of it does. Seriously, you can reach the very max level in both games and still have zero understanding of taxes, regional control, guilds abilities, dungeons, gear, buffs, perks. The game makes absolutely no effort selling you the very fucking reason you're here in the first place. For the more dedicated, the more hardcore, New World's PvP content is more rewarding, but most of it is aimed at the latter stages of the leveling curve. For someone looking just to pick up and play, diving into some casual PvP content, Throne in Liberty's PvP is more accessible. Elements are throughout the entire leveling progress. You can jump into meaningful PvP in the world, get some loot, and just move on. Now, as a man approaching middle age with several children that make me question my very will to live, and a wife that often gives me the desire to walk into traffic, my time is limited. As such, Throne in Liberty takes the crown for me on this one. It's just easy, it's accessible, and I can just jump in and jump out without too much hassle. So there we have it. In the epic battle of free versus premium, new versus old, big budget versus not so big budget, New World definitely takes the crown for me. Now typically this is something I would say at the start of the video, but with YouTube full of grifters looking to post the most absurd thumbnails and capitalise provocative words in every title, sensible normal people takes tend to die off really quick. And if you say this at the start of the video, this happens and YouTube buries it. So I thought I'd share my take at the end of the video. So if anyone moans in the comments about this being a nonsensical topic, I know they didn't watch the full video and I can just ignore this shit anyway. This trend of insulting shit you've not actually experienced is quite odd. We get it a lot with reviews that aren't out yet. People will question our review score despite not actually playing the game. It's very strange. Anyway, my take is simple. Comparing these two games in an objective sense is utterly ridiculous. It's a creative art form. One is premium, one is free. Even if the free one charged players for early access and then spent much of that early access in maintenance, one is an old school style MMORPG done with a modern twist and done very well. The other is an MMO that boasts one of the most responsive and action oriented combat systems the genre has ever seen, a technical feat that should not be overlooked. One also has the ability to highlight quests on the map to get all the quest details. Seriously, Throne in Liberty, what the fuck? While I have my favourite, both games are great and should be enjoyed by all. Every MMO fan should be celebrating and supporting the success of both games. The MMO gold rush has come and gone. We've seen juggernauts collapse and endless clones fall in their wake. But it's a genre filled with potential only limited by the technology of today. One day we could be exploring a vast universe, each planet its own ecosystem of player conflict and politics, pushing to the stars to explore regions of space no one's ever seen before. Now I'm not talking about Star Citizen, I'm talking about a game that may actually be released. But for each one of those games that fails, one of those stars disappears, one of those ideas never to appear again. Thanks for watching guys, a bit of a new style of content for me today as these videos usually get 300 views and fade into obscurity, but I've had a lot of fun with both games and just wanted to share my thoughts. So what do you think of my analysis? Am I close or way off? If you've played both games or either, let me know your thoughts below. Otherwise, take care of yourself and I'll see you in the next one.